All right. So do you want me to start all over or shall I just... I'll just go ahead, I think, yeah. <laughs> oh, good. So uh, as mentioned, uh, we would like to uh, look in what are we uh, planning to do? Um, uh, how is the uh, process also uh, and the, the, the time steps towards that contribution day? Uh, Michael and Wayne and the Eclipse colleague will also have some uh, uh, guidance and what are the formal processes uh, behind all that? Um, and then, um, yeah, we, we are all very much looking forward that after founding the uh, uh, working group at the beginning of March and uh, had some work uh, to do in setting up the governance to work on the content we all want to work on, um, uh, starting with that uh, discussion about the contribution day and then the projects we are seeing on the contribution day and then yeah, work on the content we are all keen about. So next slide, please, uh, um, Michael. Um, so um, I already did this, so next slide, please. Uh, so just a, a quick reminder, uh, uh, where are we in terms of uh, memberships? Uh, um, there was uh, a very uh, good news uh, uh, from, from last week. So we again uh, got a new member and uh, a first OEM member uh, since Toyota joined uh, the Eclipse Working Group, uh, which we totally appreciate. Um, so, um, yeah, from uh, the foundation on in March uh, uh, until now, we do have uh, 70 members, which is uh, tremendous from my point of view. Um, Michael is not stopping to tell us that uh, there are still several other discussions going on. Um, so, um, yeah, we are looking forward uh, to a very diverse and, and active community here. Uh, that's awesome. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let me just... Uh, tell you a little bit about uh, the contribution days and what we want to do. Uh, that's a slide which I uh, just copycatted from Michael, which, which uh, he prepared. Thanks for that. So just to remind that uh, what, we, what, what we've been writing into our um, uh, charter as well is that uh, we don't want to be an initiative where we are doing it, the, let's say, classical approach or the specification then content approach, how I call it. Uh, not sit and define architectures and define specifications and then maybe after five to seven years come to content, but we would like to be in code first approach. So that means uh, there are maybe members who already have some uh, um, projects going on uh, um, uh, and some uh, code uh, which they are already active using under the overall umbrella of STV. Uh, there are maybe projects who are thinking about them, and we would like to get this all into this activity. And that's also what the code contribution day or the contribution day is aiming at is, first of all, we would like in the first iteration to exchange about uh, the project proposals. Um, um, so nothing wrong about if you already have code and which is uh, attached to that uh, project proposals. But first of all, we would like to give everyone the chance also to give in uh, his perspective and his ideas into that uh, uh, contribution day. Um, and um, on the next slide, just for a reminder, um, I made a little sketch about what we also wrote to our uh, um, charter, what should be the focus uh, of those activities we are looking at uh, within the STV working group. Um, and uh, what we mentioned is the one thing is we would like to tackle this, what we call STV edge. So everything which is running on the device, in the car, what kind of different building blocks are important there, uh, just naming some, some examples or headlines uh, which, which could be relevant. So operating system wise, middleware uh, um, apps, be it in the QAM, be it in the safety domain. Uh, then we have the second part, which is STV ops. So seems like there needs to be some technology also on the back end side. Uh, also just here, some examples of what could be meant by that, not limited to this. And then the third, uh, and from my point of view, very important perspective, which we wrote into our charter is, is that we would look at what the developers need, so as to be deaf. Um, so what kind of tool chain uh, um, uh, yeah, frameworks the developer needs to, to uh, be able to work in a convenient way. So that means the proposals we are looking at should somewhere be in this universe, uh, what we wrote into our uh, charter, but obviously we are open for each and every perspective we are having. Um, and uh, yeah, second important thing, thanks Mike, that's good, um, is that uh, we also do not need to reinvent the wheel uh, wherever we already have some initiatives and some projects, which are maybe also with other uh, foundations. 
so just named a few of them uh, uh, here. Uh, so I already saw many participants of that meeting, which just is two hours back, where we uh, had a Sophie uh, initiated meeting where we also talked about, okay, how do we collaborate between the different initiatives we are having here. So we had fellows from Sophie there, we had fellows from Autoda there, fellows from Provisa there. So all this discussion is going on. So wherever you feel like there are projects out there in the world which are relevant for us, uh, that's obviously also something we should then uh, consider. Um, last but not least, a little uh, planning what we um, from the steering committee, um, just as a uh, um, draft and as a proposal developed uh, um, for milestones for 2022. Um, so uh, the invitation for that uh, contribution day one is already out. So you all received it. That's the briefing session today for that 30th of June. Um, so the details for that, uh, uh, Michael and, and the colleagues from Eclipse will take over in a minute. Uh, we are planning to have a second contribution day, which we aim at uh, having it in September this year. So when uh, summer holidays are over for all of the different uh, states and countries involved. Um, so aim is that uh, we are having a first baseline uh, at the end of June, um, starting maybe also discussion about what are the what is the landscape developing out of that. Uh, aim then for the second contribution days on the one hand side, obviously being more into code there already, but maybe also seeing, okay, what kind of other projects are evolving from there um, and uh, how does everything fit together? And obviously one of the main goals also of the contribution days is coming together as a community. So we are planning it, Michael will uh, talk about it uh, uh, in a minute uh, as an hybrid event so that we are able to host uh, um, uh, members on site, but also involved members who cannot make it uh, travel wise uh, uh, remotely. So we would like to engage as human beings, since this is a, uh, what, what did Daniel say in the other meeting today? This is a social thing uh, somehow. Uh, that's also a very important point. So that also means that you can propose projects whenever you want. So it's not uh, uh, related to contribution day. So we don't need a contribution day to propose projects at the Eclipse, uh, but that's the community events we would like to gather around these pro project, project proposals and also code we will see uh, so that we can engage as human beings around it and, and yeah, make a bigger picture out of that. Uh, so that we are not only engaging um, on project proposals and uh, the community would also like to have some, uh, let's say, um, hands-on experience. So that's why uh, we believe that it's good to aim for uh, hackathon events at, uh, as well. And we are aiming at two milestones here currently. First is EclipseCon, which is going to happen in Ludwigsburg uh, next to Stuttgart, uh, 24th to 27th of October. Uh, so uh, Eclipse already invited for a call of papers. So if you would like to get active in that uh, event overall, uh, please feel free. Uh, and also we would like to have a first, uh, let's say hands-on experience, whatever this is going to be in the end, that's what we need to define in our contribution days also. Um, and then um, at the 9th and 10th November, we are planning to have uh, an hackathon, uh, which is uh, um, happening then in Berlin under the umbrella of Eclipse. Uh, in parallel, there's a Bosch Connected World going on where we can use uh, the, uh, let's say infrastructure we are having there um, and uh, yeah, we would like to uh, perform a hackathon there where we are getting feedback from developers developing with that technology stack we are all working on. So any questions so far to timing uh, to what I've said? All right, treating that as a no. So uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting all of these people. So 60 participants in the round, I'm really excited. So uh, looking forward to uh, seeing all of us together then uh, on that contribution day. And then uh, Michael handing back to you uh, to get into the more details how that contribution day should work. Thanks a lot, Anska. Yeah, I think these are the dates which would be relevant for an organization which would like to contribute or would like to actively participate into the contribution day and actively participating means they would have turned in a project proposal. So today we have May 12th and today we inform the community about the time plan as I'm doing it right now. And we, we say that 
we, we since we need to have let's see for setting up the agenda setting up the event we would need to have some sort of project proposal deadline so until when project proposal would have to be turned into the eclipse foundation so that we can plan around how many projects we can present at the um, contribution day so and when we discussed this internally, I think there was a clear consent that we would like to avoid any kind of just announcement. There should be at least some concrete steps on the road to finally providing the source code that clearly states and clearly demonstrate the willingness of organizations to contribute a, pro a real project, real source code at the end of the day. So we will elaborate later a little bit from, and Wayne will do this about what it does mean to have the public review of a project proposal started. So just for now, just remember and just keep in mind. So the, the precondition to actively participate in the contribution day, that means to present your project proposal at the contribution day would be that you have a project proposal started at the Eclipse Foundation and that the public review for that proposal has been started. As Ansgar said, we will have a hybrid meeting. And um, since and that's on the next slide, we have a limited number of seats available for the on-site event. We will have um, some sort of event registration to make sure that we are not having more participants than we can host at the event site. So, and we plan, actually, don't get me wrong, this is some, somehow still preliminary, but the preliminary plan says that we start the event registration for the June 30s around June 20s. I know that this is quite late for maybe booking hotels and maybe we can will be able to do this even earlier, but to some extent we are we are we are bound to internal processes. So please give us that time and 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 let us make sure that we can handle this in the right way. If you want to actively um, participate, and that's what Anka Ray is saying, the code the contribution day itself is not about really contributing because you could contribute projects at any time so there's no dependency on the contribution day event but that's, this is all about using the event itself to do some pr marketing around what we're doing as software defined vehicle and to be able to do so on june 30th we would have let's say the pr support quote from all participating organizations ready by june 22nd so that we can do a couple of internal preparations internal preparation calls with journalists and others before the actual uh, software defined vegan contribution day on May uh, on June thirties, and then on June thirties we would have the event itself, and all would start all related PR activities. So what would the well, where's my mouse? What would the day itself look like? So we have a once again preliminary agenda. So the on-site event will happen at ZF Forum in Friedrichshafen. Um, and as I said, since we have a limited number of seats available, we need somehow to do a registration process. Okay. But there will be always the chance to join that meeting online. Um, if you maybe are not able to come over to Friedrichshafen, or if you're maybe one of the unlucky people who will not be able to, to get a seat for the event. So we plan to start that meeting at 1.30, which is a little bit uncomfortable for people located in the US. But since the overall duration of the event would be four to five hours, according to the agenda, it does not make too much sense to, to start much later. So then we would run into the evening here in, in Europe. So we need to find a, a compromise here. And I hope this kind of compromise works for everyone. So what do we plan? Sure, so standard things like intro and welcome still have a small introduction software defined vehicle. And then we would like to give each and every project proposal the 30 minutes or 20 minutes to present that project proposal, plus additional five to 10 minutes Q and A. So how do you, how you split the 30 minutes into project presentation and Q and A, that's a little bit up to the project or team. Uh, but I think each project should have about 30 minutes. And we, currently we play with six straight projects that would be three to four hours for the project presentations. Then we would like to facilitate a very, very, very initial discussion on how the proposed projects could be combined, how a potential stack I'm not sure if that really would be helpful in that big group, but it would be very interesting to see if there's already some way, uh, a chance to get these things coordinated, how the different proposed project would work together. Then we would have an outlook at next steps. And in the evening after the event, we would plan a, a social event to come together. So whoever then would be in Freely South would have the chance to talk to the people, build networks around software defined vehicle. And we would be more than happy that you would stay that evening with the event with us. 
um, and maybe sleep one night in the hotel. So usually you would have enough time to arrive in the morning, stay one night, and then next go back the next day. Yeah, so having that said, that's mainly about the event. There are a couple of remarks. Some of them already has been addressed by Ansgar. So this one is open for everyone. So we would not restrict this, let's say, to software-defined vehicle working group members or similar. So that should be active and passive participation. Active, again, means you are have a project proposal submitted and passive would be just you joining the event, right? That would be for everyone. If you plan an active participation, we would love to see your support for PR-related activities because that contribution is also about PR and marketing for what we are doing. And um, I'm not sure, honestly, we are still, we, we, we have a lot of discussion about with organization who plans to contribute code or contribute proposals. Um, if, we, if it turns out that we would get much more than the six to eight proposals, we would need to find a way either by shortening the time per proposal or maybe push some of the proposals to the next contribution day, something like this. So there may be the need to do a selection and we have not finalized the way here. But from an Eclipse Foundation perspective, we'll make sure that this will be a fair selection process without any, any bias or political influence here. We um, do some have more a question, Michael, from Hamlet. Uh, yeah. Yeah, please go ahead, Hamlet. What's your question? Okay, if, if you want me to hold till the end, that's fine. Uh, what's an example of a PR related activity? So that's usually, I think we, we, we would work together. So we would set up as the Clips Foundation a press release, which all the mentions all the different project proposals. And then we hope that the, that the different involved organizations would do something similar with their PR departments. And then on, on June 30th, we would go public and would announce uh, the first project proposal, first contributions to make to to generate some awareness in the press and in the media about what we are doing so so far one of the challenges we have also in my daily talks to interested organizations there's nothing available right and the code contribution i uh, don't no, the contribution day sorry i will later explain why i always misspell it as code contribution the contribution day would changes so with the contribution day for the very first time the software defined vehicle working group and the projects around will have something tangible it would be more clear what this initiative is all about, right? So, so for the moment, it's just an idea, but then for the very first time, we would have something which is really real, which is where, where people can look at it and say, okay, they will address this kind of technology or they will cover this aspect of the software defined vehicle. So I think it's very important to have a very active um, press work around June 30s around the contribution day. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's that's really Hi. great. I, oh, sorry, my voice is breaking. No, no problem. No, it's good. I also have a question about the the actual presentation, the thirty minute presentation. Yeah. Um, so I'm from a team of software engineers. We mm -hmm. had planned to show up, show some terminals, show components talking to another, show an IDE, show how okay. easy it is for the developer to accomplish yeah. certain things. Uh, is this going to be a mistake? Do we need slides? Well, that's that's honestly, we we, we are not into the details. We never talked about. Okay. In preparation, if we would have demonstrations or something similar, um, let, let, let's see. I think that's something then, I, I, let's wait until we have the, the decided which projects can be presented at the contribution day, depending on the number of, of provided project proposals. And I think then with the, with the group of organizations, which then has already filed a project proposal, we can discuss how we can demonstrate them in, in, in free design. That would be it's, also, don't get me wrong, depending on the site and depending on the location, that's something that we would need actively to discuss. So, so it's actually a question about the audience. I mean, will the audience be technical enough to want to see a terminal and, a, and an ID, or is it really <laughs> like a marketing that's press a, release? That's, that's a good question. I, honestly, I can't answer this one. So we would try to <laughs> reach out. I think we, we have a limited number of seats. So I would love to see this with maybe with the people who are already active in the community as of today. Um, and if there are more, then it, maybe, let's see. Um, I, I Honestly, I've let, that's something we would need to continue to discuss. I think we should take this with us as a question and we need to discuss how we would like to do this. Let's do that. But uh, if you need, you know, mindset, this is a code at the end of the day project code contribution yeah. session. Yeah. So this is a technical session. So please bring code, right? Bring yeah. demonstrators. Yeah. yeah, maybe not necessarily. Yeah, if, if that's I think I, I also like that idea, but let's see. 
Okay, some more points. <coughs> As I already mentioned, projects can be started at any time. So there's no need, if you would like to do something, just go ahead. I think the contribution day is mainly around generating the market. Michael, yeah? I, I, uh, I understand it like this. So every contribution will be accepted, but only a few will be uh, have the chance to um, promote their project in this audience. Is that right? So if we just- Or is there eight, something like a- is there a, re a chance of being rejected? Because in this other slide, you showed something like public evaluation or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, 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 my no. question would be, yeah. is there something like um, the community could actually mm, reject the proposal? So I, I would like to, to put that question back for a couple of minutes. So I will work later on, on the relation between projects and working groups. And as I'm stated on this slide, there's no approval process next to the EF, like Eclipse Foundation governance compliance. So onboarding a project at the Eclipse Foundation, there's as long as that project fulfills the Eclipse Foundation governance topics like IP that this, let's say that there's no mixture between strong copyleft and permissive licenses. And as long as the trademarks are clarified and other stuff, there's no approval next to what are given by these formal governance um, um, requirements from the Eclipse Foundation. So there will be no one, there will be no community committee saying that's a project we will not accept. That will not happen. That's a bit different for us. And let, let, no, let, me, let me just comment on this one in, in, in maybe in five minutes and it may be much clearer to understand what I'm, what I'm trying to explain. Is that okay? Yes, of course. just go ahead. Michael. And if I forget I, I, to answer that one, then please re-raise that question. It, I mean, maybe you, we can do it the other way around. You, you, you wrote their public evaluation starting, something like that. So maybe you can where, just- Where, where, did, I, where did I write this one? In this in slide? The, in, the, in, the, in the timeline, it says public review started. Yeah. Something the public like review started that's something which is according to our principal Eclipse Foundation process. And I said, Wayne will explain later on what this exactly means. So we have an onboarding project for each and every project which is onboarded at the Eclipse Foundation or each and every project proposal. And public review started as just one step on this process, has nothing to do with software defined vehicle, has nothing to do with the contribution there. That's just a regular Eclipse Foundation's process step. <clears throat> so it's not for, it doesn't mean that my project that I would commit gets publicly reviewed. That's not what it means. Yeah, it will be no. There's, there's the, the 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 public is is asked for comments on the project proposal, but that's oh, again okay. that that's standard for each and every project at the Eclipse Foundation. Maybe to shortly comment on that, uh, because I had that in several other discussions as well. So the co uh, the contribution day does not have any governance function. So we will not judge about the project proposal if we are accepting it or not. We we are mm -hmm. not even in a position to do that. Yeah. Uh, so that's okay. a formal process of the Eclipse Foundation, which is happening for each and every project. We learn a little bit about that later on. Yeah. So the contribution there really is a, a day where we would like to present the different projects each other and get into the discussion, also get a technical discussion. So uh, And celebrate that we have get things done. Don't get me wrong. Also celebrate that this thing is, is developing so good and so fast. Exactly. So the only Got way it. of not getting the, the project onto the agenda of the contribution day is if we are getting more than uh, eight proposals and yeah. we struggle because we do only have uh, that four to five hours, then we ha somehow need to, to judge how we are going about it. Uh, but uh, let's create those problems uh, of having so many proposals and then we solve mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, okay, but understood. Thanks a lot for clarification. Very, very short comment on project and working group. Software defined vehicles working group, that means on the right side. So there's a group of organizations which would like to focus, promote, and augment Eclipse technologies in an open governance setup. As of today, for the project proposal and the contribution day, we talk about the left side, about projects. And project at the Eclipse Foundation are very much about um, open source development, source code development, right? And it's very important to understand the relationship between projects and working groups. And there's no notion, I, and let, let me just read that slide, right? There's no notion of working group ownership of projects. Working groups are intended to complement open source projects by undertaking activities that open source projects are not well suited for. And one of these activities is, for example, cross project alignment, because projects, if we have a couple of projects which are related to the, uh, to the software defined vehicle initiative or working group, 
then it makes sense that there's a cross-project alignment and that alignment will happen usually in the working group. Working groups express non-exclusive interest in projects. So projects can be associated with different working groups. It's no, there's no focus that a, work, that a project can only be associated with one working group. And honestly, I think we will see this, right? So we have already very interesting automotive projects as of today, which are hosted in the IoT space. Uh, it's about automotive communication middleware. And the, I, 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 I assume without any, any, any having any discussions up from that these projects all would be interested to associate themselves to the uh, software defined vehicle working group. But at the end of the day, there is no direct control of a working group of, of projects. So if you know what do a project proposal, um, it would not be the working group saying you need to implement that feature and you need to do this or you need to do that. That's something which still the project can independently decide. But in reality, with our, as with other working groups, there is a collaboration and there's a wanted collaboration. So that's the normal case and that's what's normally happening. Given the time, I will be very short. A project usually consists of two groups of people, contributors, which can do pull requests, the committers, which are the maintainers of the project, have direct influence to the source code, if you start a project, you can appoint the initial group of committers and throughout the project, these committers will be, um, new committers will be elected out of the group of contributors based on a frequent and quality contributions by individual contributors. So the committers propose and elect new committers out of the group of contributors. So that's something where we think the most active contributors should become or should get more influence on the project so that the most active and the most valuable contributors or participants in a project should finally end up as committers. But if you start a project initially, it's up to the starting organization to appoint an initial set of committers. Let me skip the next slide a little bit we, of course we're short of time working groups that's a little bit more what's about. Um, there's one exception as usual, there's one exception. When I told you that projects and working groups are not related, there's one exception that specification projects, artifacts which build a specification are handled and are, have a one-to-one -one relation which makes sense to the working group. But specification projects are the only exceptions. Everything about source code development is independent from the working group. This is a picture which should clarify a little bit Specifications here is the combination of specification document, API, and uh, technology compatibility kit with a dedicated released version, whereas the artifacts itself are developed in projects. And here there is a direct one-to-one -one relation between the specification project and the working group. But this is an exception, forget about it. That's for the moment not relevant. But once, if you think about it and you say, hey, Michael say there is no relation, there's one exception and these are specification projects. Okay. Wayne, are you in the line? Then I would love to hand over to you. Thank you, Michael. I assume everyone can hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll try to be quick because I, I realize we're, we're, uh, we're short on time. Uh, if there are follow-up questions, I'm more than happy to uh, connect directly with, uh, with, with, with any of you. Uh, and certainly email uh, is a great way to ask questions. Uh, we do have Fairly extensive documentation. Uh, I'll, I'll say that in a, you know a charitable way. Uh, perhaps we may have too much, but anyway, um, I can point you to some of that as well. Um, I'll start by saying uh, we use the term project in a in a particular way. Uh, when I talk about an open source project at the Eclipse Foundation, we're talking about uh, kind of a, a team working together uh, to to build. Uh, you know, to build to build some some things. Now, a project, an open source project, may include multiple Git repositories. Um, I know that in some contexts we refer to Git repositories as projects. Um, I tend to try to refer to them consistently as repositories to uh, just to kind of keep the this, this distinction separate. So again, an Eclipse project may have multiple repositories, but it's basically one team working towards common goals. Probably, you know, most likely one uh, release schedule, um, you know, uh, that kind of, you know, that that kind of uh, arrangement. Um, projects go through various phases at, at the Eclipse Foundation. We start off in a pre-proposal phase. Pre-proposal is basically our opportunity to work with you to uh, take your idea for a project and work it into a proposal. 
uh, as part of the pre-proposal phase, we will help you work out uh, what the uh, scope of the project is. You'll find that scope is something that we find very, uh, very important. We will, um, you know, the, the, the final stage, I'll try not to labor this too, too much and for too long, but, uh, you know, the idea of the project proposals, we get it to the point where it's ready for public, uh, for the public to review it and comment on it and, and interact with the project team. Uh, the project proposal, pre-proposal phase ends with the executive director of the Eclipse Foundation uh, accepting, uh, agreeing that we can post the, the proposal. We then go into the proposal phase, which uh, again, no, not yet, back. The proposal phase is, uh, is uh, when we um, um, basically post the proposal for community review. This gives the, the community an opportunity to uh, again to, to make comments and and see the proposal, decide if they want to participate, engage uh, with the you know with the project team, uh, to you know kind of to, to uh, shape you know pretend, potentially shape the proposal. The proposal itself can actually change during uh, this period of time. Uh, the proposal phase ends with a creation review, which puts the project into an incubation mode. Um, incubation is the phase when uh, the project is, uh, we've got, we've created all the resources, the project is operating. Uh, we start that phase by uh, doing an intellectual property review of the project content. And basically this is the, the phase where the project team gets up to speed, starts learning how the Eclipse development process works, starts setting up builds, getting, you know, getting, getting their, their feet uh, on the ground uh, regarding uh, operating as an Eclipse project. After some period of time, the project will engage in a graduation review, and uh, we would put that we will wind up in the mature phase. The mature phase is where most projects spend most of their time, and it's just you know you know the project team knows what it's doing, and we are continuing to move the project forward. Next slide, please. In terms of timing, uh, this is uh, not to scale. Uh, proposal, uh, the requirement in the Eclipse development process is that a proposal be in the community review period for a minimum of two weeks. Um, the, the two weeks can be more. Um, it, um, it really depends on all sorts of factors, uh, including uh, the project proposer may have uh, different things that they want to line up and they may need more time. Um, is during uh, so after that you know a minimum of two weeks we engage in a creation review all of our reviews uh, last for a week uh, project goes into the incubation mode as I uh, in incubation phase as I described will likely spend three to six months there before we engage in a one week long graduation review where we uh, there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, people the the EMO that's my team. Uh, the PMC will review the project to see if it's ready to, to graduate and, and become mature. And then again, project will spend most of its lifetime uh, in the mature phase. Uh, next slide, please. The proposal describes uh, the project, includes things like the name, uh, the parent project, how it's nested. We, we um, I think Michael showed a slide earlier where we had top level projects and sub projects operate underneath top level projects. Uh, so that's kind of the parenting relationship. There's a hierarchical nature to our projects. Uh, the proposal also has a background description and scope. Uh, we tend to put a lot of energy into making sure the scope is well-defined. What are the technology areas that the project will work on uh, is basically the question we want to make sure we have a fairly clear answer on. The proposal will also describe uh, the people involved, project leads, uh, committers, and mentors. Um, Committers are the people who uh, do the most of the work on the project. Project leads uh, primarily are uh, responsible for making sure that the project team has resources that they need, uh, make sure that they are operating according to the Eclipse development process. Uh, in particular, make sure that the project is operating in an open, transparent, and meritocratic manner. Uh, we look to the project lead as a uh, source of information. The EMO le leans heavily on project leads and, and the PMC to understand um, the day-to-day -day of the project. Proposal will uh, also describe the licensing of the project, highlight legal issues, point to um, where the code is currently uh, living, 
And uh, it will also describe the resources that the project needs. So this describes things like, are we going to host the project on GitLab or GitHub? Um, we might use this as an opportunity to describe build resources that we need, uh, just to make sure that everybody uh, is kind of thinking, thinking the same, or we're all on the same page basically regarding uh, what, what we're doing as we move forward. Uh, next slide. Uh, are there questions showing up in the chat here? If someone can just yell at me if there's uh, if there are questions, that would be great. Oh, okay. All right. Um, we tracked a proposal using an issue on our GitLab instance. Uh, once we have the approval of the, the executive director, we create the tracking issue and start the community review. Uh, as part of that, we track uh, a trademark review. We do review the uh, the suitability of the of the selected name. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We want to make sure that our project names don't infringe on trademarks held by others. Uh, we want to make sure that it, we're you know as much as possible that we could potentially trademark the project name should we choose to do so. Uh, those sorts of things. Uh, we do a license check uh, to make sure that the project licensing is something uh, that that works. This is not a thorough check of the code. This is really more just a cursory look at the licensing that the project team wants to pursue with the project and kind of generally what kind of third party dependencies are using and, and whether or not that just all works from a licensing point of view. Uh, we looked uh, at the PMC. To sorry, sorry. Can I ask yep, a question? This sure. is it. Um, uh, so uh, when you say this is a cursory, at what point do we perform that thorough uh, scan of the code? So after we've gone through this process and we've created the project, the next step would be the initial contribution uh, process, which uh, at which point the project team works with our intellectual property team to review the project code for copyright and license. I imagine you use like some kind of source code scanner or something. Yes, yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. So, Thank you. so we do the more detailed scan after we've got the project created and and uh, you know, the project team is engaged and we have resources um, stood up uh, to support the project. Thank you. Um, you know, again, we also capture make sure that during this process we're making sure we all have we have all the resources uh, that we need captured. Uh, again, after. Minimum of two weeks, we engage in a creation review. Once the creation review is declared successful, we initiate the provisioning process, which, you know, again, make sure that we have repositories and this engages with uh, the committers to make sure that we have the necessary agreements in place and, and all of that sort of thing. Uh, next slide, please. So what's next after all of this, uh, the initial contribution is uh, provided to the to, to the IP team, and the IP team will then work with the project team to make sure that uh, you know the licensing is well understood. We we look at we do investigate the provenance of the content. We make sure that all of the people who have contributed to the content um, uh, you know a bit, uh, uh, agree to the you know agree to this process. Um, anyway, it's a fairly detailed process, lots of it with, with some nuance, uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, we have a, a dedicated team that takes care of this. Once the IP team gives uh, their uh, okay, we move the project to the Eclipse Foundation managed Git resources uh, for the project. Uh, again, this can be GitLab or GitHub. Uh, project team would then work with our uh, IT team to set up build processes and, and all of, of that wonderful stuff. And then basically you are off to the races and uh, ready to do open source at the Eclipse Foundation. Some resources that are important. The Eclipse Project Handbook uh, is a the collective uh, collective wisdom of uh, collective wisdom of, of uh, the Eclipse Foundation and how we run projects. Uh, treat this as a resource, uh, not not as uh, something that you should try to actually read. Um, you know, as you encounter things that you 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 have questions about, start with the handbook, and then you can check with other resources. We have uh, a series of training videos uh, as well. Uh, URL is listed there. I can provide all of these uh, separately as well. Uh, the incubation mailing list is a great place to go and ask questions. Uh, a lot of people who have experienced our process uh, hang out there. Uh, my team hangs out there and are able to answer questions. 
you're most likely going to get a timely answer if you ask it there. Um, or you can ask EMO at eclipsefoundation.org and we do the best. Uh, we, we will respond uh, as quickly as we can. But again, incubation mailing list is probably a better bet. Uh, with that, I think that's the end of my formal slides. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. We're a little short on time, so we can take those offline if you'd prefer, or I, I can work however you choose. So, thank you, Wayne. And just want to emphasize for the contribution day, you would need to enter the project proposal with the content which has been presented by Wayne, get into contact with Emo to clarify initial questions, get the approval by the executive director and start the review. That means we're not talking about finalizing the public review phase, we're talking about starting it. So that means on 6th of June, you should have this started, right? So everything before the public review starts, it's still, and Wayne, correct me if that's wrong, internal, internal discussion with the Emo team. And only after you gave the approval, we will start the public review phase and then it's out in the open. Yes. Uh, I do uh, want to clarify that my team will take care of getting the executive director's approval. Please don't yeah. email Mike. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was so precise. Okay, thanks. Then I would go ahead to hand over to Clark, who will talk a little bit about logos, trademarks, and websites for projects. Clark? Yeah, thank you, Michael. Um, let me preface this uh, discussion with there is no requirement for a project to have a logo or a website. But uh, many of the projects want that. They want to build a brand, they want to build an identity. And so we want to uh, kind of walk through uh, what that looks like um, and, uh, and what the process is. So, you know, first thing, the foundation is responsible for developing and managing the logo and brand identity of the working group. The projects are responsible for building their own brand identities and their own logos. So there are a, a number of ways you can get there. One of the things that we suggest is uh, if you don't have your own agency, contract with a, an agency that focuses on logo creation. There are a bunch of them out there. There are a few links right there, 99designs, Design Hill, uh, Design Crowd. These are mostly, some of them are crowdsourced type uh, logo creation. Some of them uh, do contract work, but they're pretty reasonable to work with, a few hundred dollars. And, uh, and most of our project logos are pretty simple. We don't need to be building complete brand packages typically. Um, it's, it's usually a, a, a simple logo and, and brand identity and, and you're off and running. The foundation will reimburse up to 500 euros for uh, for a logo. So keep that in mind as you're doing this. Um, one of the other things that I would like to point out is we've had some discussion around creating a, a working group uh, brand element of some kind that can be used for projects that want to use those brand elements. No requirement to do so, but there will likely be that scenario. Um, we're still going through the branding uh, exercise for the working group, but as we're, as we're doing so, that is one of the things that we are, uh, we are asking the agency to, uh, to do. It, Michael, if you'll click on that example. If you can, maybe it's uh, So Adoptium is a working group that has done just this. So they've got their Adoptium logo. Scroll down if you would. You can see all the various elements. And then they've got a couple projects here that are taking, so Tamarin, they're, they're, they're taking uh, elements from Adoptium and implementing them here. Color schemes, some of the shapes, some of the, some of the uh, and, and then the, you know, by Adoptium. So we'll look to do something similar for SDV. So projects that want to, to, uh, to do so can, uh, can, imp can uh, implement those elements. All right, and then just a little bit about trademark uh, policies. Uh, Wayne touched a little bit on this. This is, uh, we don't get trademarks for every single project, but we, uh, 
if we do determine to uh, to uh, get a trademark, those trademarks do belong to the Eclipse Foundation. We want to make sure that there are no third party, uh, that, that they don't contain any third party trademarks. And if this is created by an agency or some, some other uh, third party, there is a assignment agreement, trademark and domain ass uh, name assignment agreement um, that will need to be completed so that those logos, those trademarks, as well as any, any URLs and domains be transferred to the foundation. There are a couple of helpful links down there um, that can be referenced. I assume, Michael, that this is that uh, this uh, is going to be made available to all the attendees that they can click on those links at their leisure. All right, websites. Again, there is no requirement for a project to have a website but all projects will have a web presence on eclipse.org. Um, again, Michael, if you can click on that so we can show what that looks like. So here are all our projects, uh, just select one of those. And this is what every single project will have. Um, so basically just an overview, yep. who's involved, links off to the right, if there's a website um, that uh, they can link to. So, and this is all done through a, a Git repo that uh, will be provided to, to the project. Um, if a project would like something nicer and is willing to invest, um, they do have the option of building their own. Um, all project websites are hosted under uh, the Eclipse Foundation under a service that we own and manage, and uh, as well as the domains there, that are owned and managed by the foundation. Um, we do have a, a process for, for helping you secure URLs if you need to do so. And again, all projects will receive a, it will, will have access to a Git repo. Just wanna make it clear that the, Eclipse Foundation web dev team does not typically get involved in building websites. Um, they are they are there more as a resource uh, to to answer questions, to provide uh, uh, to provide any guidance, and uh, the best way to uh, to work with them is to just uh, is to. Uh, excuse me, is to open up a, a help desk ticket. So I will paste a link here for that. So any questions about uh, setting up a website, uh, getting a, uh, a Git repo set up, any of that stuff, just post a ticket to that uh, to that link I just sent. Um, we've also, to make it as simple and easy as possible, uh, we've set up a, a, a website boilerplate using Hugo. Um, you can click on that at your, at your leisure as well and see how that works. Uh, don't have to use that. You can use whatever technology you want. Um, as, long as, uh, as long as the project does adhere to, uh, to our, uh, our, cert, our hosted services, uh, privacy and acceptable usage policy, which is in that link, as well as the trademark usage policy. Um, just know that if you do decide to use something other than uh, other than our uh, our stacks that we use, there may be some uh, s uh, s some uh, challenges in terms of support that we can provide. Okay. Any questions uh, that we can answer around this? <laughs> so, thanks, Clark. Now we have a couple of minutes left for Q&A. So now is the right time to raise questions. And Hamlet, you are the first one. Yeah, the, yeah, thanks. The 
the pre-proposal is in our own Git instance or our own Git repo, whatever we want. And, and what we just saw, the proposal phase for the proposal, is that where we need to have the Eclipse instance and raise the help desk ticket? Or is it incubation that needs the help desk ticket? Uh, so, okay, so the proposal, we have a web form to capture the proposal. So if you want to capture that in some form ahead of time so that you and your, your colleagues can collaborate, uh, you can do that. When it comes time to actually submit the project proposal to the Eclipse Foundation, uh, use the, the web form. And there's a link to that in, in the documentation. The Eclipse Foundation will create a ticket to 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 manage the the tracking of that. Uh, we will take care of uh, you know basically shepherding you through the the, the process uh, and creating the resources. We really just need you to create that proposal document using the web form. But at that point in time, there's no source code involved already, right? So if the source code, so generally projects have some source code. Uh, you know they bring they're bringing existing source code into the Eclipse project. Uh, if you have existing source code, then you would indicate that on the proposal. Uh, if you if you don't, then you would indicate that as the proposal as well. I, I, or did I misunderstand the question? No, it's perfect. perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I I kind of a lot of what I described I, it was more just to prepare you, and I, I realize now that I I probably should have been more clear that we do actually most of most of this work. We just need you to actually propose the project and work with us to make sure that the proposal is correct. Oh, okay. So th this is Chris Clark. Uh, I think you just answered my question. One of the things we were discussing was proposing a framework for a specific process around digital twins. And what that, uh, whether it was RESTful API or some structured method for making those types of calls, it sounds like that's what you're looking for versus a fully canned solution. Correct. We, okay. Yes, we, we expect, yeah, we expect that you, you know, you may have, like I said, you may have some code already. We don't expect that necessarily to be a complete functioning uh, solution. Um, you know, you bring it over to the Eclipse Foundation and then you continue to work on that existing code base, move it forward potentially, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But keep in mind, we plan to have a hackathon in October, right? So um, the more code we have, the more relevant the hackathons we would be planning currently could be. Sure. But the purpose of the proposal is to describe what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Maybe one here from my side, Tom Fleischman speaking. Um, did I understood it right that um, a code can even reside on an existing GitHub repository and Eclipse would just take over the uh, user rights and governance um, of then existing github.com uh, repository? So. So normally what we would do is bring it into an organization on GitHub that is under our management. But yes, okay. we, 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 we can take over an existing GitHub repository. We can create a new one for you. Uh, it really, there's a lot of flexibility there in terms of what is the right solution. Perfect, thanks. And we look to you for what, you know, helping us understand what that right solution is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Michael and everybody, again, I'm happy to schedule another call where we can talk about more of the, like there's the, like I was trying to keep fair, things fairly high level in, in a short period of time, uh, but we can dig down as deep as you want into the detail. Yeah, and if, yeah, absolutely. And keep in mind the deadline would be 6th of June. And at that date, the public review should have been started. That means it makes sense to engage maybe in the next one or two weeks with, with Wayne and Wayne's team to get the things up and running. If you would like to participate in the first contribution day. Um, so I, we know that this is a tight schedule. Maybe some of your organizations need to run through pro approval processes. We have the second, we plan to have the second contribution day. Maybe that's all an option, but for sure. Um, the more we now can prove that the code first 
approach we would like to um, pursue is tangible, the better it's to get even more attraction from, from other not, not yet member parties. Let me just close my window. Okay, so the church is ringing, so it seems that we are on the top of the hour. Are there any other questions? Otherwise, if there are individual questions, reach out to, to Wayne for any kind of technical questions or other questions. I'm all the help, happy to help. If it's about more marketing and logos, I think Clark will be all the happy to help. We would share the presentation after the call today. So I will send a PDF of that presentation to, to the mailing list to make sure that you're subscribed to the mailing list. And again, if there's anything, just reach out to us and we will try to support you. Thank you very much. And then I hope I see all of you, at least or a major part of you in, in British South on June 30th. Likewise, thanks everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye, have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Wayne.